the truth of the matter is the possibilities are endless when it comes to opening a driving school business. So don't go anywhere if you're interested. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweet Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you're here to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. In today's conversation, I want to talk to you about how to open a driving school business. Everyone drives and needs to learn how to drive before they do so, right? So this creates, if you really think about it, the business opportunity for open, open up a driving school. You just need to be aware of some of your state's requirements who is currently providing driver education services in your area, and more importantly, how to get the word out about your driving school. And so once you get up and running and position your business properly for your area, your success is almost inevitable. This is just sort of a science, if you're real. So in today's conversation, I'm going to show you five sections, five things that you need to pay attention to if you want to open a lucrative driving school business. First, we're gonna talk about the preliminary research and then I'm going to talk to you about um, the business registration and uh, compliance and then the operational setup. And then we'll probably we will certainly talk about funding is very important and marketing. All right. Let's first talk about preliminary research. So step one, you want to brainstorm about your driving school business. You, you need to think about the startup and ongoing cost. Who is your target market? how much you can charge customers, the prices are different based on your location, and what you, you will name your business, very important. Now, according to research, you probably will need around uh, probably uh, 10 grand to 20 grand, depending on where you live, to actually start up to start a driving school. And, um, and you can expect to actually, you have to think about equipment, cars, you have to think about the classroom, you have to think about uh, hiring teachers, you need to think about all the paraphernalia that goes into uh, running a driving school. And you need to think about ongoing expenses also, right? So you have to think about things like marketing, uh, admin, web, website, design, website maintenance. You need to think about insurance, so on and so forth. The target market really should be young persons or adults, right? Because they are the first learning to drive and uh, so you and you also want to th target those who have to attend a course because of getting a traffic ticket and those who voluntarily want to attend a course to lower their vehicle insurance rates those are the your preferred customers and of course a driving school makes money by charging a fixed price for a full course of instruction all right so you need to think about how much you, you can charge customers again it's all about analyzing what your competitors are currently uh, charging and uh, trying to find the right middle the optimal price for yourself and you can make profit as long as you are able to deliver on your business model and uh, according to research you can expect to make around between five thousand dollars to twenty thousand dollars per month in profit pure profit again depending on where you live whether you live in uh, in texas or california or or, or oregon or maine you're going to have a delta in terms of the, the profit. And last but not the least, don't forget to name your business properly. Section number two. So after talking about the, uh, the preliminary research, you need to think about business registration and compliance. And there are a few things you need to pay attention to when it comes to business registration and compliance. First, I want to talk to you about you need to make your driving school business legit, right? When we talk about legit, we are actually referring to the business structure. So you have to think about whether you want to be a sole proprietorship, a partnership, an LLC, or a corporation. When it comes to a business, a driving school business, you want to have you want to have an LLC or a partnership or a corporation, not a sole proprietorship, because that business structure has uh, pros and cons and in this uh, model the cons are more than uh, the the pros all right so sole proprietorship aka solopreneur or you are your own boss you are you know it's a one person um, 
it's a one person business it's not really it, it's an easy form it's an easy structure to form and it gives you complete control of your business all right but you don't want that you so you want to think about partnership also the best as i said before the best model for you is an llc an llc lets you take advantage of the benefits of both the corporation and partnership business structures and LLCs protect you from personal liability in most instances your personal assets like your vehicle house and savings accounts and those assets will not be a risk in case your LLC faces bankruptcy or lawsuits very important and profit and losses can be passed through to your personal income without facing corporate taxes now remember though that uh, members of an LLC are considered self-employed and must pay self-employment tax contributions towards Medicare and Social Security so this is something you have to think about and uh, you can also be a corporation you can you can uh, cooperate if you want to and you have a C Corp you have S Corp and you also have something called B Corp B Corp is actually a, a benefit corporation and um, it's a for-profit or corporation recognized by a majority of US states and B Corps are different from C Corps in purpose, accountability, and transparency, but they're not different in how they're taxed. So you just have to see what works for you in the states where you're located, right? You can also choose to be a close corporation or a nonprofit corporation. Some states allow you, would allow you to register your driving school as a nonprofit corporation. And you can also think about being a, co a cooperative. A cooperative is really a business or organization owned by and operated for the benefits of those using its services. Think of it as a as the um, as a credit union, for example. So profits and earnings generated by the co cooperative are distributed among the members, also known as a user owners. Okay. So we're still talking about how to make your business, your driving business, your driving school business, legit, right? So once you think about the uh, the legal structure of your business you need to think about registering for a constellation of taxes right so you need to register for taxes for that you need to have a what you need to have an EIA right a, an employer identification number this is very important this is something you can actually apply for on the IRS's website it's very easy it, it's um, it's free it, it's it's fast also you can do it uh, via fax or email or even mail if you don't want to do it uh, if you don't want to do it online you got to think about small business taxes so depending on the business structure that you choose you might have different options for how your business will be taxed for example some LLCs could benefit from being taxed as an S corporation if you have the uh, if you elect if you actually uh, file the proper election with the IRS and uh, there are specific state taxes that might apply to your driving business okay so you got to think about that you got to think about state sales taxes and uh, franchise taxes all right you also need to think about the relevant laws and regulations you know it's very important to understand that you want to contact your secretary of state's office for information on laws relating to commercial driving schools so depending on your states laws and regulations can cover items such as business and personal licensing requirements for you and your instructors location requirements vehicles vehicle inspections insurance and bonding requirements so it's very important if you have any question please contact an attorney or other knowledgeable business professional before proceeding any further you also need to think about driving instructor licenses very important you have to think about you need to fill out and submit all the state required paperwork and fees depending on your state this can include anything from an application to a certificate of incorporation a copy of your curriculum of your driving school curriculum the instructor license verification for you and your and any employees you hire right insurance verification for each vehicle a copy of the of your building lease and a set of fingerprints so your state can run a criminal background check this is very critical folks don't take it don't take this lightly you also need to think about having something called release of liability so liability waivers are essential because consumers will be in high risk environment operating potentially dangerous machinery so for this reason it is best to require clients to sign a liability waiver so I'm showing you right now on the screen an example of a, of a liability waiver don't forget this this is important you want to cover your butt this is very important 
and you have to think about services contracts, for example, MSA. So driving schools should require clients to sign a services agreement before starting a new project. And this agreement should clarify client expectations and minimize risk of legal disputes by setting out payment terms and conditions, as well as service level expectations. You also need to think about getting a certificate of occupancy. Now, a driving school is generally run out of a physical location. You can't do it online. You could do it online, but you need a physical location too, such as a classroom, right? And if you operate out of, out of a physical location, you typically require something called a CO. And this is a certificate of, of uh, occupancy. And this confirms that all building codes, zoning laws, and government regulations have been met. So if you plan to lease a location, it's the landlord's responsibility to obtain a CO. But if you plan to purchase or, or build your own location, you will be responsible for obtaining a valid CO from a local government authority. All right, folks, so I've talked to you about the preliminary research, right? Step one. Step two, the business registration and compliance. Now, let's move on to, to step three when it comes to setting up a driving school business that is lucrative. Let's talk about the operational setup. There are a couple of things you need to do to kind of put your, uh, your company on the right footing from the get-go, if you will. First, you need to open a business bank account. So, what you're trying to do here is you are separating your personal assets from your company's assets and this is necessary for personal asset protection nobody wants to kind of again you're trying to cover your butt here right and so by separating those two uh, those two i would say sections of your life professional and personal you are also making accounting and tax filing easier so open a business bank account you want to get a business credit card again the idea here is to separate personal and business expenses by putting all your business expenses in one place. It also builds your company's credit history, which if you really think about it, can be useful to raise money and investment later on, especially if you're trying to expand your driving school business. Step number three, you wanna set up business accounting. So you want to uh, pay attention to all your various expenses and, and sources of income so you understand the financial performance of your business, all right? And to do this, you can actually, you have a, you have a several ways of doing this. You can actually hire an accountant, you can hire a bookkeeper, depending on your, on your budget, you can hire, uh, you can actually uh, sign up for an online tax software program, such as QuickBooks or, or, or um, Zoho or Wave, right? Because you, this will help you keep accurate and detailed accounts and so you can simplify your annual tax filing. Think about hiring driving instru instructors, okay? You need to hire quality driving instructors, and this can be uh, a bit overwhelming at times, but you got to find the proper strategies to weed out candidates who are not a good fit. So you want to think about things like uh, who you should hire, decide if you need part-time or full-time instructors. You need to determine when you should recruit driving instructors. You need to think about, you need to think outside the box, really, in terms of uh, getting the, the instructors you're looking for. For example, how about offering a referral program? That's kind of cool too, right? You can actually have a, you can offer a referral program and people can actually refer good candidates to you. And once you have candidates, please think about your team as your most important asset. We're talking here about human talent, human capital, very important. You want to be responsive and nurture qualified applicants and qualified um, personnel. You want to uh, set up phone screens. You want to conduct on-site interviews and you want to train your instructors, very important. You want to also, uh, and, and another thing I need to mention here before closing this section, you need to get business insurance, all right? Because business insurance protects your uh, driving school businesses, financial well-being in the event of a covered loss. Remember, there are several types of insurance policies that are created for different types of businesses with different risk, all right? So at a minimum, you want to get a general liability insurance because this is the most common coverage that small businesses need. So it's a great place to start for your business. I'll be right back. But after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Studio Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation today about how to open a driving school business. Before I continue here, I was talking about insurance before the before the break. 
please don't forget that you need you might need workers compensation insurance because if your business will have employees it's a it's a good chance that your state will require to you to carry workers comp coverage you also want to think about defining your brain very important right your brain is what your company stands for as well as how your business is perceived by the public so a strong brain will help your business stand out from competitors and which is what you want in the in the long run you want to think about creating your business website that's kind of important this is how people will be able to identify exactly what kind of products and services you are offering all right all over the country from new york to california from texas to uh to washington state you have uh, gazillions of uh, driving school businesses what's going to the what's going to distinguish your particular business from the rest it's part of branding branding comes into play right you need to have a website you need to have a, you need to think about your marketing literature anything from brochures all the way to flyers either digitally or paper you need to think about having a startup budget a driving school startup budget you need to think about all the cash inflows and cash outflows the expenses and the revenue sources you want to research the driving school competition because since everyone needs to learn to drive most locations already have some way to provide driver education to the local community which is a great thing don't get me wrong so but that means that you might have a potential challenge here so you need to assess the competition so you have a clear path to business victory you want to know who are the other driving schools in the area what services that they offer and the prices for those services and you want to do and you want to ask whether or not local high school high schools churches or, or other community organizations provide free driver education services to the community right you want to think about creating your driving school services and pricing list be clear here after doing this after gathering intel from the community you have a better idea of what kind of prices you want to uh, establish and uh, what kind of services you want to uh, establish also you want to offer also develop a curriculum and lesson plan again the, the cool thing here is that if you have qualified instructors they can help you actually do that all right and uh the, this is uh, this is kind of cool and a great resource to get inspiration from is a triple a like you know triple a actually provides a nice co-branding opportunity for your school imagine for example telling parents that your driving school uses lessons directly from triple a sounds pretty good right and you also need to uh, organize your administrative system and you need to think about growing your driving school do you want to um, hire an, a virtual uh, assistant you wanted to outsource all the services again this kind of uh, decision making depends on your budget and your personal situation I want to talk to you now about funding number four funding you might be so folks we are here talking about how to open a driving school business so I've spoken to you about the preliminary research number two business business registration and compliance number three the operational setup and number four I'm talking to you now about funding that's if you don't you don't have a, a deep pocket you need some cash there are ways you can get the cash you need now you first need to write a business plan whether you whether you're going to get a uh, you want to get a small business grain or a, a loan or a credit card or whatever you need to have a business plan and many traditional small business lenders think about banks credit unions and the SBA the small business administration will likely want to see a business plan they want you to explain why you need the funny the, the, the money in the first place how you plan to use the money and most important what you're going to do to pay it back so even if your lender doesn't require a business plan it's always an excellent idea folks to help you gather your financial records and make sure you're having everything in place before you apply for a business loan and the cool thing here is that writing, writing up a, a business plan isn't just a great exercise for convincing a lender to approve your application though it's also an important step in clarifying your own vision in determining whether or not borrowing money right now is even a good idea okay uh, a formalized business plan is also a great roadmap for your business and can help you navigate challenges or leverage su successes and so you need to also so after writing a business plan you need to 
find the right type of loan. So when we you have to think about term loans, SBA loans, line of credits, invoice financing, invoice factoring, merchant cash advances, micro loans, business credit cards, commercial real estate loans, yeah, or even working capital loans. So it really depends on what you're looking for. So if you're brand new, let's say if you're brand new and looking to cover working capital, for example, your options will be more limited than if you've been in business for years and have a strong track record. But either way, the cash is there. You just need to uh, do some online search. We have covered the, the topic of uh, business loans extensively on other shows. So you just want to get into our database and learn more about the kind of uh, business loans that are available out there, depending on your situation. And there is there are, there is a constellation of loans available to your driving school business startup. That's for sure. And uh, you can also use uh, asset based lending to actually boost your driving school business's cash position. Asset based lending allows you to uh, leverage your existing assets, such as accounts, receivable and equipment. And those kind of loans provide you with immediate funds, which you can use to pay for company expenses. As a matter of fact, asset based financing is very flexible and can be used in a very variety of ways, including you can use it to improve cash flows. You can pay company expenses. You can actually buy equipment and other assets. You can do leverage buyouts and you can do turnarounds. All right. And uh, as opposed to uh, conventional banking solutions, asset based loans for uh, driving school businesses have few covenants and can be deployed relatively quickly. So on average, the application and due diligence process can be completed in a couple of weeks. And this kind of makes them an ideal alternative for companies who want to companies that want to get that kind of funding. You also need to think about the type of lender that is the best fit. So when we when we look at the ecosystem of lenders, right, there are there is a variety of lenders. It really depends. So you have banks and credit unions, you have online lenders and you have micro lenders. Now, bank banks and credit unions are a great option when your business is well established with strong sales value and cash reserves and you have a good personal and business credit profile. They're not a good choice if you need the financing quickly because the application and funding process can sometimes take poof, several weeks or even months. And some banks and credit unions typically require collateral. So and if you want your money faster, you might want to think about online lenders for your to fund your driving school business. And because they don't have um, they don't they I would say that their fees are a little higher in terms of APR and all other origination fees and all the other uh, all the the hodgepodge of fees they have but if you need the money fa uh, if you need the money faster you don't have specific collateral or are relatively new in business online lenders may be a better choice they can provide term loans lines of credits and most other forms of financing and as i said you should expect to pay higher interest rates or fees and then you have micro lenders and th those lenders are a good choice for new business owners who can leverage a small amount of capital into a bigger business benefit. They often work with uh, newer businesses and also offer uh, mentoring and guidance to help this newer businesses succeed. And because they are often funded by nonprofits, they are typically smaller dollar loans at low, even sometimes zero percent interest. So you want to shop around. So once you have the, now that you know that the trifecta of lenders out there, banks and credit unions, online lenders and micro lenders, you want to shop around and see which really match which uh, lender match, uh, matches your, uh, your situation. And you also need to understand how to qualify for a business loan. If you, if you want to get approved faster for a business loan, and here I'm talking about any kind of business loan, you need to have a minimum of, at a minimum in your um, loan application package, you need to have a business plan, I already talked about that. You need to have financial statements, a business banking account, three months of bank statements, your business license, other legal documents, including articles of incorporation, tax returns, including business tax returns, collateral if required. So by getting these things together before you apply, you can actually speed up the process. And once you do this, you just have to submit the, the, your application, right? So you, you, so you, can, uh, you can, if you want a higher amount, you can even call the, the, uh, the customer service or you can call a loan specialist at the uh, lenders 
to the lending institution to have more information about the loan. So folks, here is the fifth and last section of uh, how to open a driving school business. So number four, again, number five, we have marketing. So kind of quickly uh, recap here. Number one, preliminary research. Number two, business registration and compliance. Number three, you have to think about the operational setup. Number four, the funding. And number five, marketing. Marketing is kind of critical, right? Everybody knows that. You need to think about advertising your driving school business. This is kind of exciting. You're a, you are an entrepreneur and the sky is the limit for your new business. And now it's time to get your first customer. In short, you have website, Google, local high school connections, social media, and additional partnerships such as hospitals and course systems. This is kind of cool, right? Very important. Folks, this is very important. One of the best ways to promote your driving school business is through local connections. Here, we're not we're not talking about an online business. This is a local, very neighborhood-oriented business. And so local connections can include can actually um, mean that you are working with local high schools in your area. You can you can partner with auto insurance agencies in your area. You can establish relationships with your local DMV office, all right, your Department of Motor Vehicles office. Now, I'm not telling you to limit yourself just to this. It's just a, a start. You can also work with uh, a lot of companies uh, in your state, not just the, in your local area, all right? And one thing I want to tell you also is that you need to think outside the box. Let me give you an example. In California, for example, California, it is possible to get out of a, a driving ticket by going to a driving school. Therefore, a great way to advertise your business is to hand out flyers outside traffic court. So beside advertising your driving school, you want to improve your driving school's internet presence here i'm just referring to having a website you need to register for uh, you need to set up a google uh, my business account so that you can be found locally very important again driving school business is a local thing so you want to be found locally you also want to think about asking your customers for testimonials and reviews right this is this is a great way to build a brand you are trying to you if you have if you receive uh rave reviews you want to you want the whole world to know it and most importantly you want to you want the local community to know the great job you've been doing so fantastic you also want to promote and market your driving schools you can actually uh, offer um you can do this through affiliations and uh examples of affiliations include offering discount programs to students from local high schools having special programs that are connected to specific auto insurance companies getting on the list of qualified driving schools for traffic court in the lo local area you can actually even think about creating cross promotional campaigns with auto dealers and rental car companies and you want to have vehicles specifically equipped for handicapped drivers and uh, getting publicity because of this the cool thing here is that you want to actually find a way to uh, get customers and keep customers coming back so attracting customers is great but retaining them is very very important it's more important it's all about what it's all about attrition you want to actually make sure that you have repeat business so that's very important all right folks this is it for today's conversation so i was talking to you about how to open a lucrative driving school business and um, actually, whether you have money or not, there are ways to actually fund a business and uh, sort of kind of quickly recap what we spoke about. I give you a preliminary research that you need to go through in terms of finding the cost involved, the expenses, the target market, the um, the profitability, how, how much you can charge customers, the curricula, the, the curriculum and all that kind of good stuff. Number two, you need to think about business registration and compliance here. You have to choose the business structure. You need to think about registering with uh, with state tax authorities and also federal tax authorities. Don't forget, if you are a single member ALC, you need to pay self-employment taxes. This is very important. And the third element here was the operational setup. Number four, we have to, we talked about funding. And number five, last but not the least, we spoke about marketing and branding. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.